action. Welcome to another amazing episode of the Action Podcast. Today, we're on episode 98, and we have a few films we will be reviewing. The first film we'll be reviewing is The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, a movie based off of uh, a, a book for, about Churchill's secret warriors. This stuff just got declassified, and ultimately, that's where this movie came from. Uh, and that stars Henry Cavill among uh, and um, uh, Alan Richardson of Reacher fame. Uh, it's also directed by Guy Ritchie. I didn't know all this, actually. I didn't know it was Guy Ritchie and Jerry Bruckheimer actually produced it. So this was kind of a bigger movie than I thought. Uh, right. Next, I was able to see an early access screening of Challengers. So we'll be reviewing that today as well. Ultimately, that comes out this weekend. But that's with Zendaya, of course, uh, the tennis movie. Third, we have Abigail which is uh, doing pretty decently in the box office. I got to look at the budget, but yeah, that's doing pretty well. Fourth, we have Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Uh, that's on Netflix now. That's directed by Zack Snyder. Right. And lastly, we finally got to Late Night with the Devil, which uh, has been getting a lot of acclaim. So Pete will be able to give his review on that. So with that, Pete, let's get into Ministry of Ungentimely Warfare. I'll let you start on this one. Great. Yeah, this is I, I knew it was Guy Ritchie going into it. And Guy Ritchie has, you know, done a lot of my favorite movies like Lock, Stock and Snatch. Like those those two films are amazing. I didn't realize that he did Aladdin when I was looking at his credits. Yeah. And of course, The Covenant, which and is the Covenant. Yeah. Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. Um, but right. yeah, I'm glad that um, we got that from. Yeah, <laughs> I know he did Aladdin. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you already mentioned who is actually in this. Um, from what I understand, this was sort of the, the the rumors are like this is sort of sort of almost like a prequel to um, almost like a James Bond. Like this is where they got the James Bond thing, because Ian Fleming, who um, who created the James Bond uh, series, um, was actually in this film as well for yeah. me. At the end of the day, this is a really fun movie. Um, the action sequences are great. Uh, the comedy is is great as well. The the in between stuff, like it it felt at first like it it just kind of dragged things along, but then you start to realize what's really happening, um, and so you start to appreciate it a little bit more. I felt that this movie was was there was so much like. Inglorious Bastards and the Kingsmen yeah. um, kind of combined together, and then the music was a little bit Kill Bill, you know, with that um, with that old Western kind of guitar with a trumpet yeah. kind of thing. You know what I mean? And oh, I like that. Yeah, it had a Western vibe to it. Yeah, the music was very Western. Um, and I don't music really doesn't stand out to me typically unless it's good. Um, Unless I rewatch something over and over again, unless it's like Star Wars or yeah. Indiana Jones or like one of these just like powerhouse movies um, where the where the score is incredible. And this score was was not bad. It was pretty good. Um, I, I, agree. I, I I thought it really elevated the film because like you're saying it, it I think I helped I think I helped with the tone because the tone was obviously slightly in jest, uh, you know, as well as being with this action film. But they it wasn't like a super serious film like it, this wasn't like uh imitation game right where it's just like 100 drama i mean this was like you're saying like a light-hearted movie and then again like with the music it really added that kind of different style to it again it was kind of almost like a magnificent seven type of vibe where it's like you know everybody's got their quirks and they're you know bringing the band together to create this mission you know and you really do need to go into this with an attitude like it's it's going to be ridiculous like you're going to watch some really ridiculous sequences like people just killing without looking um people just laughing as they're killing right, right. and and but ultimately this is a really fun ride you're going to have a blast they got a yeah. seven one i mean that's a great score seven three it's seven three now pete i just oh, said seven three right right yeah good uh, definitely see this movie yeah i only really have positive things like i said when i was deciding on what to watch um, that's when I, you know, I did, you had mentioned this movie and it, this movie, I, I don't think had a ton of marketing on it. And yeah, it was a little, so bit I wasn't, sweet. I wasn't like 
a hundred percent like, oh, I absolutely need to see this film. I don't even know if I saw the trailer to be honest, and that's very rare for me. Um, but it wasn't until it got closer to the release date where yeah. you really started to kind of see things happen. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping so. As of today, which is we're you know we're we're recording this on a Tuesday. Box office. This had actually a decent budget, Pete. Sixty million dollars mm -hmm. for this type of you know World War II film, Guy Ritchie. Uh, I'm not I'm not mad about that. I'm like that's. No. I think a decent budget. I appreciate the figure. fact that it's not a two hundred million dollar film. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like you got a, the good bang for your buck for sixty million, especially different locations that it had. You know, again, the action sequences. You know, these aren't nobodies in this film, and but it's only grossed ten million worldwide. Um, this came in, I believe, in fourth place. Yeah, fourth place. Disappointing. Eight point nine um godzilla beat it which is just like people what are you That's seeing shocking like who, who, yeah. what what are people Ab doing abigail beat this i mean you're talking barely and then civil war this was overall pretty poor weekend I, it looks like for the box office um but i i felt like this should have gotten 25 million 30 million in it in its opening and it, so it certainly deserved it i'm i'm hoping maybe this has a second win to it because this this was a well-crafted film like you're saying this is this is Guy Ritchie, Jerry Bruckheimer, who, you know, obviously I don't think Jerry Bruckheimer has been doing the same. Where he's giving us the best films. Pumping out things like all the time, like we're used to, where it's just like The Rock, Crimson Tide, Bad Boys, like all those like one after another. But this felt back into the Jerry Bruckheimer like wheelhouse of, you know, this was a, a good action film with a good director that really helped uh, uh, add to this screenplay because like i said this had style to it guy Ritchie, again i loved him in the covenant this is diff obviously a different tone than the covenant but this is again going more towards your inglorious bastards or um even uh monuments men i don't know if you ever saw monuments men yeah i never did it's on my list that started 14 yeah I, I, that movie didn't get great reviews but i enjoyed i just love the subject matter i think and again a lot of great acting in it uh bill murray is in that john goodman um Matt Damon in that Matt Damon's in it uh Clooney in that one or no am I thinking directly yeah okay um right. but I I like that movie so again that, that kind of reminded me of that movie too where it's a lot a lot of light hu humorness involved in a serious kind of plot so those are those are kind of my comments but ultimately I I highly recommend this I if especially if you like World War II movies you know mission movies I thought this it had a good plan. Like I, I liked everything about it. I really don't have. I mean, I, I can. You can nick no. things, but I, hopefully, I, I our think... audience supports this movie and goes and sees it because it yeah. deserves. Uh, Absolutely, it deserves eyes. Absolutely. Uh, next, we have Challengers, and Challengers is, of course, the new movie starring Zendaya, uh, directed by Luca. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Uh, G. Uh, let me look at it. Luke Luca. Guadagnino, Guadagnino. You, uh, you nailed it, Paul. Nailed I it. I actually, I think I did nail it. Uh, I don't actually know this guy. So this was when it was when this movie was marketed. It was always just like filmed by this guy, and I I don't actually know what he's done. Um, Bones and all, and I, I, I didn't see that. Bones and all is a Timothy Chalamet movie, a vampire movie, um, which is on previously noted list of movies i still need to watch yeah i i don't know anything he's done so but apparently he's a bigger deal than what i know about um but th this also stars uh, michael faced and josh o'connor um they're, who they're basically they're ba they basically grew up together like in a tennis academy and they kind of have this sibling rivalry like they're best friends brothers not not like blood brothers but you know brothers but then also like have this sibling rivalry and so you know zendaya is kind of this object of this sibling rivalry and i don't i don't want to spoil her because as a you know it hasn't come out yet but uh overall i thought the movie was 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 kind of what you see from the trailer and, and that's a i guess a positive thing i don't think that's a negative thing um i wasn't like blown away i don't think this is like the greatest movie of all time but it was entertaining and i thought the tennis action was was pretty solid 
Um, there's a lot of like, like the crowd last night, I thought was a lot of oohs and ahs. So like it was getting some reactions from the crowd, which is not always the case in movies. And so I think overall, I, I, I enjoyed it. I'll probably see it again at some point. Like I'd watch it again when it comes out on streaming. Um, right. Cause, cause it's, it's an interesting story. And again, at the end of the day, it, it is theoretically a sports movie, you know? So uh, if you like sports movie, this, I'm trying to think of a good comp. Um, there's nothing a lot really like this. It's a, it's a, it's a different type of film, which I, I kind of enjoyed. And again, like Zendaya, Zendaya is really good in this. And I think, um, I, I think if you're a fan of her, I think, it's worth it to see for her. Uh, I didn't really know the other two gentlemen. Um, Michael Face, he was in West Side Story. Um, pinball movie. I didn't see that movie yet. Uh, but he's, I mean, he's been in some stuff. And then uh, Josh O'Connor. I didn't recognize him either. God's Own Country, The Crown. So he's probably in British stuff, it looks like. But right. ultimately, I thought it was a, what, what was a decent film. This has a, it does not have a rating, but. Yeah, I thought it was that was solid. It was it was it was an interesting movie. I thought, uh, yeah. And so again, that comes out uh, this Friday, so uh, you'll be able to see it this Friday. That's the major release for this weekend. To be sure. Uh, all right, Pete. Next we have Abigail. What do you Let's got? Let's go, Abigail. Abigail. This this got a seven one um, on IMDb, and I'm trying to wrap my head around that high score. So this is a really bizarre movie in a way because it's um you know the essence of it is that this this group of of people kidnapped this girl just you know for the sake of the story and me trying to explain it imagine if somebody kidnapped kaiser soze's daughter so the person that the the father of abigail is this sort of mysterious you know, he's almost a myth, really. And people are so frightened of him because they've heard all the stories about him and and but nobody's ever seen him or met him. But they know that once they find out that this this guy is the father, these group of criminals, these kidnappers start freaking out and they're Ooh, locked. I'm your father. They are they are trapped in a house with this girl and things just start happening. This movie does take a little bit of time to kind of get into it. Um However, there is like some really funny moments. There's a, a gentleman named, uh, he plays Peter in the movie and he's really stupid. So it's right, rightfully so. Yeah. Uh, his name is Kevin Durand and he's the Kevin best, Durant? not Durant, but <laughs> Durand. Um, and he is so funny as this really stupid man. Everything that comes out of his mouth, you laugh. Um, the the it's not even really a horror i mean it's really a vampire movie in 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 essence um dan stevens is in this we all know him from downton abbey um he plays sort of the main and beauty and the beast right yeah and beauty and the beast um and i just read this this blurb that he's basically responsible for all the success of hollywood today so i don't know if he's doing things behind the scenes but apparently dan stevens is the man in hollywood right now so he did a he did a great job. I mean, everyone did a good job. And the girl that plays Abigail is real good. Um, I mean, you'd have to be to be a vampire and play a vampire at that age. But I don't know. It, it just it got silly. And it, it was but maybe that was the point of it. I, I don't know. I'm really torn with this movie, to be honest. I, I might have to see it again and and watch it really paying attention to the story because it, it, it's I don't know. Yeah, I, it was I, I couldn't bizarre. see it. Um, it was just bizarre. Um, I don't know if I, I, I honestly like because I have like two more credits this week, I think, but it's like I don't, I, I, I want to see Civil War again and I wouldn't mind seeing Ministry again. Yeah, and it's just like I don't, it just doesn't look interesting to me. It's just not something, I'm yeah, it, it's it's it got a lot of hype and and again, it's it's fine, it's good. Um, I, I just it's I don't know the budget's kind of high on this one. This one has a thirty million dollar budget. Um, usually these films are like ten or fifteen mil. Yeah, but I, mean, I can see why. I mean, they're they use a ton of practical effects, and it's and it's really gory. Um, yeah, that's the. 
It, it's it's you're not going to go to you can watch it at night. It's not going to scare you. It's not like Insidious or you know yeah. one of these movies that's just going to mess you up. Um, so it's not First really moment. a horror. It's a vampire thriller. It's it's um. it's. Been, Interesting. All right. Uh, I'm going to go first on this one, Pete, but next is Re Rebel Moon Part 2. Yeah, and, go ahead and set um, it up. Yeah, I'm going to go first because I feel like I'm going to... So this, go. inter this is everything. So I need to... I want to preface this is I thought... So the first one I think I fell asleep, not because I, I it was just like absolutely terrible, but I just... I, I watched it at a bad time. And and so I know I missed some details, all that good stuff. I need to rewatch the first one, but I've I want to preface what I'm about to say because I'm not comparing the two. I don't think they're on the same level. But I had kind of the same thing with Dune, which is where like the first time I just didn't get a lot of the stuff because it's just kind of so much information, um, and it's not as deep and in depth as dune so that's why i don't want to make sure i'm not comparing the two um and then the second one was kind of the same way although it again less difficult than like dune but definitely i thought it was like a slow roll in the beginning like the beginning i'm just kind of like i was a little bored in the beginning but then when it kind of really got into the meat of the action i i, I started to lock in a little bit more and i think that's just way the way Zack Snyder has like he that's just kind of how he's been making films I think that's just his style I think if you're like if you did not like the Zack Snyder DC EU I don't think you're gonna like this film because to me it's very similar I think it's very polarizing where you're gonna have some people that just that that do enjoy it and then other people are just think it's the worst crap they've ever seen and I'm like I was reading a little bit of other reviews too it's got a 5.2 which is it's not good, but it's not terrible. Um, the meta score is pretty bad. That's 36. Uh, and I would expect that. This is not a critical acclaimed film. But I, by the end of the movie, I was more into it more than I've been definitely after the first one. And like even almost going into the second one. So I like I, I would want to watch this third one. Like I kind of like where the journey is going now. Again, I don't think this film is perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's got definitely some issues, but there's I thought the action was 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 pretty decent. There's some cool fight scenes and action scenes. Again, that's what Zack Snyder does. He has some cool slow motion sequences that are interesting. Um I I love uh, uh I can't pronounce his name. Uh Jamin? Jiman? Jiman, yeah. You know, and there's a <laughs> there's a cool scene at the end, From like when it, theory fame. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I always love when he gets excited because you know he, especially if you followed his career, you know he he always just has like the toughest of like routes to get somewhere, and and so like he 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 always feel like his pain and suffering when he finally gets into a positive situation, and so. I always love when he gets excited or, or or into it, and so yeah. But I just felt like his his whole purpose in this in this second film was to just rally the troops and give speeches right before something's about to happen, and then scream when something good happened or when something bad sure. happened. That was literally his his entire performance. It was a good performance. It's just like he's a he's a fantastic actor. Like, yeah. All they needed him for was somebody to, you know, do the Braveheart. They'll never take our freedom moments, right? Like they needed him to do it. And he crushes those. So I, he I, crushes them. But I mean, that's all he did. Yeah. I mean, like, like I said, this script isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I, I, again, there's there's parts where I just like I didn't care. Um, but I, I think this is a film I need to watch again. Mm -hmm. Really better understand. I need to watch the first one, too. But to really, now that I've kind of seen everything, maybe I can actually understand everything and be more involved. Because um, there's like, there's parts, there's, again, I feel like this is like Batman, Superman. It's like, there's things I like about it. There's other parts where it's just like, it's almost like too much. Uh, and, it, and, and it just takes away from like, you don't need it to be all out here. Like sometimes just keep it narrow. Like, 
that, that's what I liked about Rogue One was Rogue, Rogue, Rogue One. I mean, that's actually not really true. I don't know. I, I, I think. I, I think simplicity in this movie, I think, would have worked more. I, I, I don't know. Again, I, I, I agree with that because you know he he certainly needs an editor, or 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 he needs people around him to tell him maybe something just isn't working or something. Like it, it just this this these two movies come across as this is what I'm doing. This is what I want to do. And that's all that's going to happen. And you can't yeah. say anything. And nah, 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 nah. right. It's just, this is like, this is my thing. Um, and that's a problem, right? Like, like the, har the harvesting scene, I think is a good example where they go harvesting and it's just like slow motion. Cutting like a music video. Yeah. It's like, a, it's like a music video. And I'm like, do we need this? Yeah. It's like, Oh, it just, just, you gotta go get the you gotta go get the wheat. You go over there, you get the wheat, and you bring it back, and then we yeah. keep going. With you don't need a music video to break it up. And it, and it's not it wasn't even like a good song. It was just like <laughs> the music was right like right in the middle of this podcast. All of a sudden, I'm like, Paul, I'm so hot. I gotta just I need to dump this water on my head. And it's just like yeah. slow motion. So good. Yeah, it was just I was like, that's not action. Like that, you know what I mean? Like it's inappropriate timing. It's just it's so dumb. And it's falsified so, action. It's it, it's not it's not relevant to the actual story, and you're wasting our our time and interest. Because if this was a ninety minute movie, and then a big part of that is this action, I, like I like the one scene, and I, again, I wouldn't need to see it again because I didn't really know who's who. But it was kind of a cool scene where they're like honoring like the people, you know. And I'm like, all right, that, that, that's all right, and it kind of pays off, I think, at the end. But it's just. Yeah, there's just a lot, some stuff. It's just like, yeah. So, I, you know, the other issue that I have, and again, I, I'm not going to bash these movies, right? Because everyone else is doing that. I, I mean, there's value in these movies. Um, I do feel, however, though, going back to my original point about Snyder and, and having it be just like, this is mine and only mine. You could make an argument after the first movie that that was a perfect ending, right? To To this movie. And then they did the second one. And it it kind of set itself up to end there too. But then they, at the last minute, are like, no, I think I'm going to keep going. And then you told me today, you wrote to me and said that they, he his plan is to make six of these movies. like Three to six, yeah. Three to six movies. Like, God, this guy must have more money than God to to produce six of these movies. Um, the biggest travesty... The budget, was only, the budget was only 60 million, I think, which... Wow. But the, 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 the go back to our original review of the first one. No, 83 million. I had the same comment and I have the same comment with this one. The, the best character in this series is that robot and it's yeah. never used. He's never there. He's at the beginning and then he's at the very end. And he's 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 the best character. And you got Anthony Hopkins voicing him. I'm like, why wouldn't you use this guy? And he's like he's like a badass. He had a great scene in this one. Like. I, I, again, I don't want to spoil yeah. it. I, I, I love the payoff. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Where's he been? Like he's, he always just like shows up in, at the beginning and he Fs off you know, for the whole movie and then he kind of comes back at the end and has like a cool scene. It's like this movie could just be this this robot doing a bunch of cool scenes with Jimon Hensu like just screaming positivity towards him and you know, yeah. and then, then the movie's over. I mean, the performances are fine. There's nothing really over the top. Um, the villain's kind of cool. Um, I get screen. He, I thought he did a good job. Yeah, it's it, um, it's fine. I mean, and it's Netflix, so it's not like you know you're wasting a ton of money on it. So it's a good. It's fine. Yeah, I, like I said, I want to see it again before I think I have a final thing. I think. Yeah. I, 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 I think our preface was perfect. If, if you weren't a big fan of the Zack Snyder DCU, I don't think you'll like this film. But if you're into sci-fi action movies, I think it's a decent watch for streaming. Um, again, probably a little bloated budget for a movie just being decent. But I thought the, I thought when it really got going, I thought it was kind of solid. But again, not a, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. So do it with the wheel. I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to give you a vote either way in terms right. of whether you should see it. Cause then I don't want a bunch of hate mail. So, all right. Uh, lastly, Pete late night with the devil. This movie has been 
the talk of the town. Yeah, you... this is finally we got it. Um, so this is as a seven point five. This is a well reviewed movie, as we we've all heard. Directed by Cameron and Colin Cairns, um, who were, I think that Cameron was mostly an editor, and I think this film is written, directed, and edited by and produced by these brothers. Um, sounds familiar. Nah. But we're gonna do. Um, and so this stars David Dest Destmalchian. Destmalchian. Um, you know him, you know his face. He's been an Oppenheimer, he's an Ant-Man, he was in Dune. Um, if you see his face, you're like, oh my god, I know this guy. So this Oh, is, yeah, yeah. He's in uh, Dark Knight. Yeah, he's in Dark Knight as well. He he's real good. He he's only usually on screen for like a couple minutes in movies, but he always crushes. He's like that guy um who played the new um Joker in in the Batman re revamp. He kind of looks like uh he he kind of looks like Oppenheimer uh who's the actor Killian Murphy yeah he kind of looks like Killian Murphy like a poor man's Killian Murphy yeah he's he's poor Murphy <laughs> so this movie is basically uh he plays um a late night show host who is trying to compete against Johnny Carson and he never he he gets to a point where he has his best show. It's it starts off like this retrospective of his career. It's almost like a little mini biography, like a documentary right in the beginning um, that brings you up to speed. He's basically he's never been able to beat Carson. He's about to probably be thrown off the air. He kind oh, of this is, sorry to interrupt. This is on uh, if you have AMC Plus, you can watch this now. I'll, I might watch that. There you go, Paul. You can watch that. I should have known after, that after my review, of course. Right. If I may. So, so he is like desperate. He's like, I need something big. And he reads this book about uh, the interview with the devil or something. And there's this girl who's possessed, um, who has made a couple of news stories. And so he decides I'm going to bring her on along with a bunch of other psychics and stuff and have a Halloween special. Um, and then after that little sort of documentary, then it's like literally watching a show being taped from start to finish, even like the in-between breaks, what commercial breaks, like everything is timed out perfectly, um, which goes to the editing. Like these guys crushed this movie. Their performances are fantastic. Um, his performance, um, the, the David Desmalchian's um, character, he is phenomenal. Uh, the girl that plays the the possessed girl is so good. Uh, even the Ed McMahon sidekick guy is is funny. The psychics that come on um, are 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 real good as well. It's a really really trippy movie. The first half of it, you're you're just freaking out about what is about to happen because little things start happening here and there. And then, you know, the big finale sequences start to happen. And oof, go see this movie. This is, this is one of my favorite movies of the year. So wow. good. Wow. Well, again, it's on AMC Plus now. So I'm excited to be able to watch that. Sasquatch Sunset. Uh, I was able to sneak this in before the podcast got released. And this is an interesting movie. On the one hand, I absolutely praise this movie for its originality and such a unique concept that that we just we've never seen before and to have an entire movie with Sasquatch from their perspective you know uh I I applaud them 100 percent uh this movie definitely has a lot of comedy in it uh it is funny uh but I do think at time it just drags a little bit it's I I didn't miss the very very beginning so I don't know if there was any subtitles I don't know if it matters but um yeah you know there's there, there just wasn't a huge story and so it is kind of the day in the life of a Sasquatch in a way so it's also I think it does what it's supposed to do um but I just I think there's if 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 I were going to direct it I think I just would have really upped the pace because it, you're just like, okay, I get it next. Okay, I get it next. So that, that would be my own thing. But overall, I enjoyed it. Like I said, I think it's a 
a unique concept that I think is is definitely worth the view. But just kind of keep in mind that it's this is an exhilarating thrill ride. You know what I mean? This is a it's almost like watching a National Geographic in a way. And I know some people absolutely love that. And so I think if you'd like that kind of stuff, like where you're just literally kind of watching animals or creatures be, I think this is definitely in your wheelhouse. And I think you'll like this. If that is really not your cup of tea, then this this may not work for you overall. But like I said, there is some uh, 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 there there is a good deal of comedy. And it openly is a, a comedy and you know some funny scenes laughed out side scene, uh, laugh out loud scenes uh the crowd was was laughing quite a bit in it and so um yeah so i i would say overall uh check it out all right well that's gonna wrap it up for this week uh we may or may not have an episode next week because we pretty much reviewed the main movie so that could alter things however we uh next week will be coming out is challengers like i already mentioned i saw the early access but that'll actually be released this weekend along with boy kills world which uh looks kind of interesting as well so uh but we may, yeah we may just add that to the the following week we'll see um but we, we have a bunch of other podcasts coming out so make sure you stay tuned to the channel for those um we just shot our 100th episode tombstone so make sure to catch that out when it when it when it comes out uh as well as all the other ones so with Make, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And with that, Pete, that is a cut. Thanks, guys. Bye.